So hi everyone, this is Sumana uh, and I work as an account manager for APAC customers. Um, I work um, uh, for an existing customer, maintain and build a relationship with um, our existing customer and make sure they're happy with our suite app. Thank you. Uh, Ashley Nordstrom and I'm the solution consultant for our region, so I deliver the product demonstrations. Lovely, thank you. Hi guys, my name is Herbert Hayes, I'm the APAC Sales and Alliance Manager. So I um, basically look after our relationships with our partners and also work directly with um, our clients as well. Okay, okay. so today we're going to to um, just talk a little bit about Zone, what is three-way matching, legacy versus new, and then we'll get into the demo. We'll um, summarise and do takeaways and sneak peek, and we'll go through some questions and answers at the same time, and we'll wrap things up. Okay, now, um, I'm not too sure if you're all aware. In 2021, we had an injection of capital from a private equity firm called Inside of $76 million. And through that injection of capital, we have acquired a number of companies, Fast Four, which I'm sure you're familiar with. And um, we invested in Satori Reporting, they're a very powerful reporting tool. And then just recently, Infinite Cloud. So very, very shortly, it'll be relabeled as Zone Payroll. Now, over the last couple of years, we've grown quite a lot. We've now got over 300 uh, employees around the planet. We're in multiple regions. We've got professional services globally. So really, at any point in time, um, you're going to have access to, to assistance from Zone. We've built a very, very good knowledge base and, um, yeah, and all, all tools to make lives easier and to be able to have a self-serve type approach um, to any technical challenges you may have. Yep, I'm going to be very, very quick with these. Zone billing is for very, very complex billing scenarios. The crazy thing is, is quite often people are comfortable with their billing scenarios. Where their challenge is, is with revenue recognition. So zone billing addresses both complex billing scenarios and revenue recognition, which is very powerful. Zone approvals is for approval flows. Uh, it came after we introduced zone capture where um, people would end up with a bill that they need to process. It's put above a certain amount so we can send emails to different people who are in the approval structure and they can approve via email. You don't need a next week license. And um, you can also use the features and functionality of approvals through your employee centre licence. Zone Capture, well, we're going to give you um, uh, some of the new stuff that we've um, put into Zone Capture. Zone Reconcile is, um, we have clients where they've got 20 or 30 bank accounts. Zone Reconcile enables you to bring your bank statements into Zone uh, in its entirety. And we improve your efficiencies in your reconciliation process by up to 86%. Zone payments, if you want to send an email to somebody, click on this link to pay. You make a payment through a Stripe connector, we bring that payment directly into NetSuite. Zone reporting is the only tool that sits outside the walls of NetSuite, and it sits on Microsoft Power BI. As we know, Microsoft have the best BI product on the planet, and uh, we invested three years in building our very own interface to bring your NetSuite data into Power BI down a transaction layer. So when you're looking at a beautiful pie chart, if you click on a link as a, into a piece of the pie and drill down again and drill down again, eventually you'll see the transactions that make up that report. Very, very powerful. And of course, we've got Zone Payroll now, which um, gives you not only the payroll ability, but we also give you a journal generator and also employee access. So the employees can jump in, they can pull their um, pay slips out, they can register their times, all of that cool stuff that ICS have been bringing over a period of time. Freeway match, what is it? Very, very simply, it gives you the ability to have your purchase orders, what you've received, and your supplier invoice or your bill that we've captured. I'm going to hand over to Samana now and she'll take you through the next next steps. Thank you. 
Good. Thank you, Herbert. Um, so yes, as Herbert said, um, to give you the most basic definition of TV maths is the comparison of data across three documents to make sure that all of the relevant information matches. So in any organization that uses purchase orders, um, three-way maths is used for accounts uh, payable billing process to ensure and verify that the item number and the rate of the um, item of the vendor bill match the corresponding purchase order and receiving uh, payments receiving reports. So if there are three documents, uh, if three documents match, then uh, the invoice is approved for payment. So this process also helps to identify discrepancy, ensure accuracy and prevent error or fraud in the accounts payable process. So, um, so to help our customers and to support um, on two-way matching process, Zone Capture comes um, out of box with the two-way math functionality that provides full insight in the two-way maths before saving the vendor bills. And to take it to the next level, a two-way math is also compatible with auto-processing of vendor bills connected to the single purchase order. So as I will show you all the uh, um, steps and also to enable um, the auto-processing and we'll show you how it works as well. Now we will have a look into the uh, key differences between the uh, legacy purchase order matching and our new two-way mat, and also um, the reason why we introduced the three new way mats. So the first reason um, is, as many of you already know, that the old way mat purchase order did contain uh, six purchase order validation rules, but that was more of a two-way mat, not true three-way. Um, we could only select one rule at a time and only related to quantity or rate uh, with very limited flexibility. And there was uh, very not um, uh, flexible, uh, very uh, not good uh, fit for the customers. So yeah, to fully support uh, companies that are working with a complex purchase orders, uh, you know, we do have now uh, two new two way max, uh, which allows a flexible threshold settings where you can define what should be prevailing data options? You can also set up threshold in percentage or in amount. Um, we also have now four label settings with different uh, configurations um, that can be set up in the main uh, configurations or subsidiary, vendor, or item record. So in the old way uh, purchase order maps, highlighting line items with color was very uh, uh, not very convenient to the customers because there was no maths, um, because if there was no maths, the amount defaults to zero. Um, so to uh, remove the shortcoming, TV maths provides the ability to have full insight of actual three matching data in one screen. That includes um, what was captured by OCR and what was actually in the purchase order and item receipt. So, you know, there is a, in one screen, you can see all three documents at the same time and it will also give you the guidance on how to process the vendor bill by showing the variance and uh, with the color coding. Uh, the next one, like, you know, you uh, adding new lines um, or manual adjustment, adjustment is very complicated in legacy purchase order. Like if there is a, a red line highlighted, there is if there is no match, then um, you can't bring back the purchase order line. So whereas in our new three mats, um, you can, you know, easily add lines um, on the fly. Like for example, if you add fright, cost or sipping, you can easily add that one. Um, we have added summary lines to provide the user an auditable three-way matching result after saving the vendor bills. Uh, so it is pretty unique feature that clarifies whether there were or weren't, uh, weren't a difference. So, um, you know, you can easily spot, okay, what was the difference and if it is uh, uh, within the threshold or not. So yeah, that was the um, main difference. And since we have released the new two um, I've been receiving a lot of um, positive feedback from the customers. So one customer called me the other day uh, saying that, hey, he was uh, very happy. And then uh, the two three way maths has helped him to speeding up on their complex purchase order scanning process. So before they had very limited um, use of zone capture because of the purchase order values and rule, but now they are more than happy, you know, and um, better utilizing, utilizing the scan and capture with the use of the two MS. So yeah, that was it. And I'm going to um, hand over to Ashley to go through 
and uh, overview of the uh, zone capture. Over to you, Ashley. Thanks. All right. Thank you. I have a visitor who I was planning on having nap time, but has not worked out this way. So we have an extra attendee on the meeting. Uh, please note, guys, any questions, put them in the Q&A and we'll either try and answer them as we're going or we do have some time at the end where we can go through that. So I'm just going to quickly recap a little bit about the process of scan and capture. So obviously it's for AP automation. So we would receive your vendor bills and credits and have them come across via an email plugin to your NetSuite account. We then create the vendor bill proposal. And on this validation stage, that's when we would look at utilising the three-way match functionality uh, for those purchase order related invoices. And after that process has occurred, you could still have some kind of approvals workflow take place, if applicable as well. All right. So I am now going to... Sorry, because I was sharing my slide on my internet browser and I didn't want to interrupt that. I'm just going to log into my NetSuite account. Okay, so first step, I'm actually going to quickly navigate to the setup. Uh, the reason for that is, is all existing customers of Zone Capture would have three-way matching already available to them. So Zone Capture is a managed bundle. So we manage pushing the update to your environment. Simply be you have not enabled that feature. So you do need to tell the system to move from legacy to the new version. If you would like to test in your sandbox environment, we don't manage the updates there. So your sandbox or your NetSuite administrator would need to run the update in your sandbox and then still enable the feature on the configuration. So I'll just jump to my zone capture config here and we'll hit edit. You may have additional configurations per subsidiary as well. Okay, uh, so you can have it done by subsidiary or just have one main configuration for the whole application. So I would come to my three-way matching sub tab here and I would enable three-way matching. So this is the new feature. This tick box is for the old legacy system and that is now greyed out as I have the new one turned on. I'm just going to highlight this is also where you could pre-define how you would like your data to be, I guess, presented, a little bit of customization as well. So on a company setting, you can tell the system if you would like any threshold settings applicable. Uh, and if I select that for quantity, I can then say I would like that done on a percentage or fixed amount. So these same sub tabs are also available on vendor records and item records. And you can run all three and we would look on a hierarchy basis. First on the item, is there any settings there based on thresholds? If nothing, we'll search the vendor record. If nothing there, we would then search this main configuration also. So that's going to determine some color coding that's going to be present when we actually go to process some of these transactions as well. So we're going to jump into my incoming queue here. And open that up in another window. Okay, so I've got 
two invoice samples that we'll be looking at processing today. So one is uh, for Iron Horse Bicycle. So it's not set up for auto processing. My next vendor here is set for auto processing. And this transaction has failed. And I'm going to then run through why it hasn't automatically created a bill. Uh, so then you can understand how we can also auto process your purchase order related transactions as well. So we're going to open this particular invoice up. So the system's still going to work and pre-fill all of the relevant header level information. Where it's going to differ is I'm now going to have a three-way matching tab here as well. So I've got my supplier's invoice. I've got the purchase order lines here. And some of them have been greyed out in blue. So that's going to indicate to me that there's items in this three-way matching sub-tab when I pop it open that are going to need my attention. So not everything is being billed. So we're going to open three-way matching. And here I've got represented my purchase order on the left-hand side. I've got my receipted quantities in the middle and then the supplier's bill lines itself represented on the right-hand side of this table. Oh, dear. I know it's meant to be on that time, isn't it? Okay. So if there is a true match between those records, you're going to be presented with a green tick here. If there is an orange tick present, that's going to indicate to you that the system has found a match between the line items, but there is a variance that has been detected. And hovering over these fields, you do get the little pop-ups with some notation there as well. So here, the bill line has been successfully matched, but differences are detected. We then highlight to you where those differences are occurring as well. And here I've got my rate highlighted. I've also got it coloured in red, so there will be different colour coding. So it's indicating to me that I'm being billed $120 for my rate, but my PO was raised at $115. I have no threshold allowances set, so that's why it's in red. You'll notice my next line here, it's got the same um, circle around my rate, but it's got different colouring. So that's indicating to me there is a variance, but I have an allowable threshold and it has fallen within that threshold. So Processing AP, I would know my company has predetermined this is an allowable variance based on it being coloured in black, not red. We can also indicate to you if you're being short supplied, perhaps you are expecting to receive a purchase order in full. And this would indicate that you've received nine but you raised your purchase order for 10 items. That may not be relevant if you're being received typically with partial shipments, but if you are expecting to be billed in full, that may be a warning that is of some relevance to you. So I'm going to now hide these matched lines. So the items are a match and I'm going to still accept this variance here on the rate. So I can come and hide matched lines. And now I've just got these lines to deal with in the system. I've also got some progress status bars up the top here are to indicate line matching progress and amount matching progress. So I do have one item that the system by default has not matched for me. And that's because my item code 
isn't a true match to what is referenced on my supplier's bill. And also the rate is slightly different. So the system is only as good as the data it is presented with. So if you do ever find items are not matching, it could be perhaps does the vendor code need updating? Have they changed that? Um, so yeah, good indication there to maybe check that data on the item and see if you could make any improvements to help that auto matching. So I can manually bring this across as well. So I can say I'm going to drag and drop this item against here. And now I've manually said that those two are a match and okay to bill. I've got a standalone charge here. I've obviously had some R&D done by this supplier for perhaps a new product line or something like that. So this isn't an item. This would be a standalone expense that I would look at picking up for billing. The same could also work with freight charges or shipping costs that you have on the bottom of suppliers' invoices. So you can pick them up for billing by simply selecting the little plus icon and saying, yes, that is fine to be billed. Uh, it has got an account that it's posting through to. That would be a default account. If I didn't like where the system had picked that up to post it to, I could still manually change that from my account drop down here. So I've got everything here with a tick on it and we're going to submit and my matching is at 100%. Wait for my computer mouse um, to catch up with itself. We have not been friends lately. <laughs> okay, so I'm also getting a pop up here because I have items highlighted with red. Uh, you may want someone to give some notation why they have still found that acceptable for billing. Uh, so we're just going to make a brief notation and say this item needs, you know, its price updated. Uh, suppliers obviously had an increase that I don't have referenced in my NetSuite account. So now also I'm going to navigate to our three-way matching summary report that is now attached to this record. So I've just hidden the PDF and we're coming down to zone capture. And here we've kept a full audit trail relating to each item on those records. And then if there has been any variances detected on those and then where that variance has occurred and the amounts as well. It does have a flag of fail. It's not that it's failed to post this particular transaction. It's kept that notation there as that could be a trigger to have this sent out for further approval as well. So everything else is a pass, but these variances fell outside of tolerances. So this flag could trigger some kind of further workflow approval as well. Okay, I just really quickly want to also now touch on our auto processing functionality. So I want to navigate to my vendor file here. And you do have the option with zone capture that you can automatically process vendor bills and credits, and even what one you want that to relate to. So I'm saying only purchase order related bills. And I want there to be green ticks for this process to happen automatically. So if we come back here, this one has failed for auto processing. Now I already know why it's failed because I've obviously created this for our webinar sample, but it has failed because the quantities and the rates 
are different to what I raised on my purchase order. So even though we found a match to the PO suite account, uh, it hasn't auto saved because there is differences detected. So I would be expecting to have tolerance allowances set uh, for this to have been acceptable for processing. Uh, this is also a really nice example of a two-way match, not a three-way match. So I don't have, so sorry guys, item receipts done on this particular transaction. <laughs> Uh, so, yes, that was a really nice example of that we can work with two-way matching, not just three-way match, um, and still pick up any variances and knowing that auto-processing would not just auto-process anything and post all of these variances without you being it warned uh, and to actually come in and still verify that data. So... I would probably not submit this. I would query with the supplier um, the difference in pricing and then decide how to proceed with saving this or rejecting this invoice from the system. I guess last thing I should probably share before we jump into any Q&A is also just the Knowledge Base Centre. So if you come to help.zoneandco.com, and zone capture and go to using the application. We've got a full article on the new, sorry, three-way match. So that would run through how to enable, like I had done on that main configuration. Also any, you know, settings, any questions you may have, uh, how we match, so the criteria, what fields we're actually trying to reference to help pull across those items and present you with green ticks uh, for proceeding with billing. Okay, thanks, Ashley, for a very insightful demonstration. Um, so I'm sure everyone is now a bit familiar with all those color coding, what it means and what's the difference between all those color codings. So, yeah. I'll just, um, if you can just go through these ones just quickly and then we'll go to the next um, slides again. Um, okay, these are the key takeaways um, that um, we have learned from this demo and session. Um, if you have any questions or anything, please uh, let us know in our Q&A or um, you can send us email and we are here to help you um, in your own questions. Okay, um, so how to get these features for all existing customers? Um, you just need to enable um, the feature on the zone capture main configurations or in the subsidiary configuration for zone capture. Um, to find this instruction, uh, as since um, as I just showed you, uh, how you can look into the knowledge center to uh, for, uh, where you can follow the process to set up the two-way matching. And for all our new customers, uh, Zone Capture comes out of box with a full three months functionality. All right, so I'll take back over this slide. So we do always like to kind of end our webinars also on some exciting new features that we will be releasing very soon. Uh, so Zone Capture is going to be introduced with generative AI capabilities. So that's going to give you greater, obviously, data extraction, going to be able to tailor how that data is then also populated on those vendor bill, both on header level and the transactional line level detail. So giving you a lot more flexibility there and also not needing to create as many rules as well. So at the moment, you know, with Zone Capture, if you're an existing customer, you kind of need to tell it a little bit of what to do. This is going to obviously learn as you interact with processing those invoices as well. So not having to create rules to prompt the system how to um, post your vendor bill. 
We're also going to then have more flexibility with the Gen AI for vendor and subsidiary selection. And we're also going to be introducing a vendor portal. So that's going to help with both vendor onboarding, being able to keep that master data up to date, and also give your vendors some visibility um, on their invoices and transactions. So I know that's something uh, probably a fair few of you have been waiting for for us to release. So that is going to be coming very soon. And we'll also be looking at doing a webinar again when we have these features released. Um, so please keep an eye out on our socials as I'm sure we will be sending some information out in the coming weeks about when we would be organising a webinar for these features. All right, so now we'll jump into some Q&A and we'll have a look here. So I did answer one. So does it consider multiple bills or item receipts in one purchase order? Yes. So partial billing of a PO. So let's say you raise a PO and you then might get, you know, three, four invoices related to that purchase order. As long as the items are received against it, then in that three-way match pop-up, we're going to then present to you, well, what's on the vendor bill? What are we saying is open also on that PO that hasn't been closed off? And then present to you those green ticks uh, for matches. Multiple POs also isn't an issue. Again, even now with Zone Capture, we do need those multiple PO numbers to be referenced on the invoice for the system by default to try and pull that information together for you. But you can manually link POs also um, to the transactions as well. Uh, oh, can we please show the slide for the colour coding again? Yes, we can do that. So we will double back here. Again, all of this is also on the knowledge base. So in that article for three-way matching, uh, all of this is explained there as well and probably in a lot more detail. So this is just taking a little bit of a short explanation on this colour coding, uh, but the knowledge base would have a lot more detail about this. Uh, so we will highlight here, you can see receipts, quantity, rate, amount. So it is very intuitive with where it is highlighting those differences from. And then of course, the colouring giving the reason why you have received that um, also. Okay, um, thanks Ashley, thanks Samana. Um, lovely to have you with us today and uh... Stay tuned. We've got some really exciting stuff coming out um, in the not too distant future. So thanks again and have a lovely afternoon. See you, everyone. And yes, obviously. Thank you, everyone. for our technical issues. We all yeah. made it here in the end um, and we really hope you enjoyed the session. And next time round, we will obviously endeavour to not be tardy for our sessions together. So thank you so much, everyone, and enjoy your afternoon. <laughs>